Today I began my tour of some of the cemeteries in the Bluegrass State, Kentucky. It's a state rich in history and known for bourbon, bluegrass, horses, and basketball. Today I'm going to explore some of that history as I begin my tour in Lexington. My first stop is just a few miles west of Lexington at the Pisgah Presbyterian Church. This church was founded in 1784 and first met in a log cabin that stood on this site. The current church was built out of Kentucky limestone in about 1812 and is still home to an active congregation. It is here in the church cemetery that we find the grave of two-time Kentucky Governor Albert Benjamin Happy Chandler. Happy Chandler is probably one of the most beloved figures in Kentucky politics. He served his first term as Kentucky Governor from 1935 to 1939. He then left the Governor's office and served in the United States Senate from 1939 to 1945. He then left the Senate and served as the second Commissioner of Major League Baseball. It was while commissioner that he approved the contract of Jackie Robinson to play baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers, clearing the way for Robinson to become the first black player to play in the major leagues. He also established the first player's pension fund, which earned him the title, the player's commissioner. During his term as commissioner, he upset the owners who failed to renew his contract in 1951. He returned to Kentucky where he was elected to a second term as Kentucky Governor, serving from 1955 to 1959. After finishing his second term, he continued to live in Kentucky and was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1982. Happy Chandler died on July the 15th, 1991. He was 92 years old. My next stop is at the historic Lexington Cemetery on Main Street in downtown Lexington. This large cemetery consists of about 170 acres and is the final resting place of about 65,000 people. The entrance to the cemetery is guarded by a large castle-like building that serves as the cemetery's offices. Lexington Cemetery was established in 1849 to deal with a massive amount of burials from a cholera epidemic that plagued the area. Over the years, some of Kentucky's most prominent citizens have been buried here including Senator Henry Clay, Vice President John C. Breckinridge, and legendary basketball coach Adolph Ruff. Upon entering the cemetery, we make an immediate left, and traveling just a short distance down the hill, we come to the largest monument in the cemetery. This is the tomb of Senator Henry Clay. Henry Clay was one of the most beloved politicians in Kentucky history, representing the Commonwealth in both the Senate and the House of Representatives. He was born on April 12, 1777 in Hanover County, Virginia and moved to Kentucky, where he established a law practice in 1797. Almost immediately, he became involved in Kentucky politics and was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1810 and later served as the seventh Speaker of the House. He also served as Secretary of State in the administration of John Quincy Adams and later ran for president, but was defeated by Andrew Jackson. He ran for president again in 1844, but again was defeated by President James K. Polk. Clay represented the citizens of Kentucky in the United States Senate, where he was known as the Great Compromiser for the part that he played in bringing about the legislation known as the Missouri Compromise. He remained in the Senate for the next several years, but eventually his health began to decline and in December 1851, he announced he would be resigning his seat in the Senate. On June 29, 1852, the Great Compromiser died in his room 
at the National Hotel in Washington, D.C. He would be the first person to lie in state in the rotunda of the United States Capitol. His body was returned to Kentucky and he would eventually be laid to rest here in the tomb at the base of this 120 foot tall monument that was built in 1857. My next stop is at the grave of Vice President John C. Breckinridge, who was born here in Lexington on January the 16th, 1821. He was elected to the United States House of Representatives in 1850, but served only four years. In 1856, he was elected as the 14th Vice President of the United States, serving under President James Buchanan. Breckinridge served as Vice President until March 1861, when he was elected to the United States Senate. However, in December 1861, John C. Breckinridge was expelled from the United States Senate after joining the Confederate Army. He saw action during several major battles, including Shiloh, Stones River, and Newmarket. In the final months of the Civil War, Confederate President Jefferson Davis appointed him Secretary of War, a position he held from February 1865 until May 10, 1865. Following the Civil War, Breckinridge moved to Canada, where he lived until President Andrew Johnson granted him amnesty in 1868. He returned to Lexington in 1869 and became involved in the insurance business. In 1873, his health began to fail, and on May 17, 1875, John C. Breckinridge died at his rented home here in Lexington. He was 54 years old. My next stop in the cemetery was not planned, but after talking to another visitor, who happened to be a Civil War enthusiast, I decided to visit the graves of the three Morgan brothers, all of which fought in the Civil War. The most well-known of the brothers is General John Hunt Morgan, who formed the 2nd Kentucky Cavalry and fought at the Battle of Shiloh. He is also known for the ill-fated Morgan's raid into Indiana and Ohio which was a failure and resulted in him being captured and held as a POW. He eventually escaped and rejoined Confederate forces in the South, but was killed in a surprise Union attack on September 4, 1864, near Greenville, Tennessee. Resting beside the general is his brother, Thomas Hunt Morgan, who was a sergeant in the Confederate Army and had just turned 20 years old when he was killed in battle on July 5, 1863, near Lebanon, Tennessee. The third Morgan brother buried here is Francis Key Morgan. He survived the Civil War and was a member of President Jefferson Davis's escort when he fled Richmond in 1865. After the war, he returned to Lexington where he worked as a tax collector until he died on October 6, 1878 at the age of 33. My next stop is at the graves of Robert and Elizabeth Todd. Robert Todd was born here in Lexington in February 1791 and would see action during the War of 1812 as a member of the 5th Kentucky Volunteers. In November 1812, Robert would marry Elizabeth Ann Parker to come would operate a successful grocery store here in Lexington and Robert would become involved in Kentucky politics serving as the clerk of the Kentucky House of Representatives. On December 13, 1818, their third child, Mary Todd, was born here in Lexington. 
She would become the wife of President Abraham Lincoln. Elizabeth Todd died on July 5, 1825 at the young age of 31. Following her death, Robert would marry Elizabeth Humphrey in 1826, and the couple would continue to live here in Lexington until Robert's death on July 17, 1849. Elizabeth Humphrey Todd would live for another 25 years. She died on February 16, 1874. Robert and both of his wives are resting here in the Todd family plot. From the Todd graves, I transition from the older section of the cemetery to the newer one. Here, we find the grave of golfer Gay Brewer. Gay Brewer was born in Ohio, but lived most of his life here in Lexington. At a very early age, he developed a glove for golf and became very good at it. He won the Kentucky State Boys Championship in 1949, 50, and 51, and was the 1949 United States Junior Amateur Champion. He attended the University of Kentucky on a football scholarship because the university did not offer golf as a scholarship sport. While at the university, he was a member of the football team that was coached by the legendary Paul Bear Bryant. He turned professional in 1956, and during his career, he had 10 PGA Tour wins, including the 1967 Masters Championship. Gabe Brewer died on August 31, 2007 from the complications of cancer. My next stop was again not part of my original plan, but plans have a way of changing and I stumbled upon the grave of Jim Varney quite by accident while looking for another site. Jim Varney was a talented actor, comedian, and writer who is best known for his character Ernest P. Whirl. In fact, the character of Ernest became so popular that a number of Ernest films was made over the years, including the most successful, Ernest Goes to Camp, which grossed over $23 million. Marty also won a Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Performer in a Children's Series for Hey Vern, It's Ernest. Varney also starred as Jed Clampett in the 1993 remake of the Beverly Hillbillies. It was featured in the Hank Williams Jr. video, All My Rowdy Friends Are Coming Over Tonight. Jim Varney was a heavy smoker and in 1998 he was diagnosed with lung cancer. He died at his home in White House, Tennessee on February the 10th, 2000. He was 50 years old. My final stop is at the grave of legendary basketball coach Adolph Ruff. Adolph Frederick Ruff was born September 2, 1901, in Halstead, Kansas. As a young man, Rupp played basketball for Halstead High and went on to attend the University of Kansas from 1919 to 1923. At Kansas, he played basketball for another legendary coach, Fog Allen. While a member of the basketball team, Rupp also got to know Dr. James Naismith who is credited with inventing the game of basketball. After his time at the University of Kansas, he took a teaching job at Burr Oak High School in Kansas, where he also coached the basketball team. In 1926, he became the head coach at Freeport High School in Illinois, where he also taught history and economics. After four years at Freeport, he left the school and in 1930, he became the head basketball coach at the University of Kentucky, a position that he would hold for the next 42 years. 
During his career at Kentucky, his teams would capture 27 Southeastern Conference regular season titles and 13 SEC tournament championships. His teams would also appear in 20 NCAA tournaments, six Final Fours, and capture the national championship in 1948, 49, 51, and 58. In 1972, after spending 42 years as the coach of the Wildcats, Coach Rupp reached the mandatory retirement age of 70 and was forced to retire. He reluctantly retired and had a brief stint as an executive with the ill-fated American Basketball Association. After that, he spent his final years living quietly in Lexington and on December 10, 1977, the Baron of the Bluegrass passed away at the age of 76. Adolph Rupp was one of the most legendary figures in college basketball. He was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1969 and into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2006. And today, when the University of Kentucky Wildcats play their home games, they play them at Rupp Arena. This concludes my visit to Lexington, Kentucky. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below. And if you want to keep up with my travels, please consider subscribing. Until we visit again, thanks for watching.